Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming with the weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs Mini Backpack. Uh, all right, so grab a coffee, grab a tea, let's start your workouts, go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from The Bag Memo. Do you ask slash consider your husband's opinion when buying a new luxe piece? bag, watch, or small leather good. My husband is always involved in my purchases, but I don't always follow his opinions. Um, I absolutely love this. Uh, okay, so do I ask my hubby's opinion when getting something new? Uh, sometimes, and I do like to get his um, his feedback on certain things, especially handbags, because for those of you that don't know, my hubby isn't really a big fan of luxury goods. Um, that's not really his thing. So when it comes to handbags, I like to get his opinion because there have been many, many of times that he brings things up that I would have never that I would have never dreamed of you know so it's like getting a fresh set of eyes on something that I'm looking to add to my collection or um or anything like that, you know? And um, there have been times that he'll say, hey, well, what about this? What about this? What about that? Because I get so caught up on the item. I get so caught up on the beauty of it that there have been times that the, the whole function or how much I'd use it doesn't really kick in right away. So when he asks those questions, I'm like, oh, you know, it starts to click. And uh, like you, there have also been times that I don't follow his opinions or his advice, you know, um, because we have very, um, <laughs> we have very, very different tastes, but I do like to hear what he has to say. Um, but at the end of the day, I end up going for whatever ends up speaking to me. And he agrees, you know, he'll say, I don't like it, but if you like it, you're going to be the one wearing it, then go for it. And truer words have never been spoken, you know? So we make a pretty, uh, <laughs> we make a pretty good team, but, um, sometimes it's funny to hear what he has to say about some things that I absolutely love, you know? And even when I hear what he says, I'm just like, no, man, no, that's me. I love the glitter. I love the rhinestones. He's not a big fan of glitter or rhinestones, you know, and I'm just like, no, that's my jam. That's my, that's like my identity, you know? So, um, it's kind of funny, but, um, I do like to get his opinions on some things. Other times I haven't, uh, but, um, it's great to get a really, you know, really fresh set of eyes on anything that you're looking to add to your collection. That's why I love Minx Mondays, because if I have an opinion about something, I might see it a certain way. And until someone says something in the comments, section, then it clicks. I'm like, oh, I didn't even think of that. You know, it totally makes sense or whatever the case may be. So, um, <laughs> you guys have definitely helped me a million times as well when it comes to adding anything to my collection. But I am curious, are you guys the same way? Do you ask your significant other, uh, or do you just end up going for whatever ends up speaking to you or whatever the case may be? If you want to share, let us know in the comment section down below, but fantastic question. And hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Kyle Cheeseman. Do you have many designer sunglasses? Um, all right. Uh, I used to. I used to have a pretty good collection when it came to designer shades, and now I only have one pair left. I ended up selling everything else. Uh, the pair that I have left, I really wish I would have brought them out, but they are a pair of uh, Fendi's, and uh, they are the plastic frames, and I will never, ever get rid of them because inside of the frame, um, it has glitter, and then on the outside, on either side of the temple, it has uh, two Fs, and both of the Fs are completely done in Swarovski crystals. So I absolutely love them and I'm really hoping that they'll make a comeback so I can rock them again, you know? So I'm, uh, I'm sitting here with my fingers crossed, but um, I will never ever get rid of those. Um, but when it came to designer shades, I guess I was really hard on them uh, because I felt that I would either break them or um, I'd end up leaving them on my car seat and then I'd sit on them and I'd break them or they end up falling. I'm also the type of person that ends up putting sunglasses on top of my head and I don't know what the heck I'm doing that the sunglasses somehow end up falling off every single time. So I was super bummed out and uh, the pairs that I hadn't, you know, I hadn't completely demolished, the ones that were still in pristine condition, I decided to sell them. Now the craziest thing is when I started to sell them um, that I started to notice just another factor about designer shades that I never really thought of before, and that's resale value. So in my mind, I was thinking, okay, these are Chanel, these are Gucci, these are Fendi you know, I'm buying them for X amount of dollars and I'll be able to sell them for this amount of dollars or for this amount of money, for this amount of dollars, most smartest, for this amount of money. And um, when I'd go to sell them, oh no, we're talking a pair of $600 sunglasses, I'd sell them for maybe $125, maybe 150. And I'm talking in pristine condition, you know, with uh, with receipts and the whole, the whole nine yards. 
So I was like, man, I'm losing a lot of money on these sunglasses. And at that point, I was already so paranoid about having anything happen to them that I wasn't really enjoying them. So at that moment, I decided to just completely, um, you know, not go for designer shades. And as beautiful as they are, and as much as I love them, um, I feel that cheap sunnies just end up working out for me the best. And the funniest thing or the craziest thing is like, like these Key Australia sunglasses, I have dropped them a million times, all right? I have dropped them a million times. I have, I, I haven't lost them, but I've I misplaced them and they end up resurfacing in like the oddest places. And I feel, I feel like these never go away. Nothing's happened to them. And we're talking about a pair of sunglasses that's 50, 60 bucks. So I decided to go for Key Australia sunglasses instead of designer shades. That way, the extra funds I can put towards handbags or small leather goods or shoes. I don't know. But um, that was a little bit of a tangent when it came to designer shades, right? Uh, but just to give you guys my thought process on them, because I mean, I've seen like the new Gucci ones or the new Louis Vuitton ones. I'm like, oh my gosh, these things are gorgeous and they have a ton of crystals. But then I'm like, no, I'm, 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 I'm brutal when it comes to these, to these sunnies. So no, <laughs> for the short answer of, of uh, to answer your question, I should say, do I have many designer sunglasses? I don't. I have one pair of Fendi's that I absolutely love. So fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Ju Kong. Hopefully I said that correctly. I too chew the Trident Spearmint gum as well. And I love this gum for its powerful scent, chew and taste. But do you feel that sometimes the powerful mint smell pollutes your small leather goods? I carried this gum in one of my small leather goods for a while, and now I feel that it smells like a mix of spearmint gum and coins, although I do not carry coins even after I stop carrying the gum. Do you have any remedies to uncontaminate the smell aside from just airing out the piece? <laughs> I know exactly, I know exactly what you're talking about because I too have experienced that this little guy ends up making a lot of the small other goods that I carry it in um, having that um, having that same scent. Um, all right, so besides airing it out because I do, I, I end up using this guy the most, I think, and uh, this one smells a little intense like this gum for sure and sometimes I'll air it out. Um, the smell doesn't completely dissipate from it when I do go to air it out. Another thing that you can end up trying out is the gum that has like the foil on the back. Um, the one that it's kind of like those little tabs. So that way the smell doesn't necessarily permeate from the packaging. So that's another route that you can end up taking. I used to do that um, or I've done it before and I just keep coming back to, the, to this gum. I, I freaking love it. You know what I mean? I've been chewing it for years. Um, but um, I got to be 100% honest with you guys. All right. I got to be honest with you because like I said, the smell doesn't completely dissipate from the mini pochette or any other small leather good that I end up using. And um, it really comes down to, <laughs> it really comes down to dragon breath. All right. I've said it before. And for me, I have to, I have to carry gum in my handbag. I have it in my car. Um, I just, I, I have to have gum with me. So the way that I see it, it's like, all right, do I deal with the smell or do I get rid of the gum? And for me, it's, I'll deal with the smell. I'll deal with the smell. I'll deal, I'll deal with the mintiness of my small leather goods because I just can't bring myself to not carry gum or mints or anything like that, you know? <laughs> I don't want to have to have, I don't want to have dragon breath, you know, because what if I'm out and about or what if I meet one of you guys and you're like, hey, Minnie, and I'm like, hey, and you just see this green smog or this green thing come out to greet you, you know what I'm saying? So, no. <laughs> for me, I will, I'll take the, I'll take the smelly smell of the goods for sure. And I will also throw this out there. The smell doesn't go into my handbags. Like if it's in one of these little guys, it doesn't, um, contaminate any of my bags either. So it ends up staying in whatever small leather good I carry. And I that could be the reason why I end up sticking to the same ones over and over again because they already have they already have that type of, they already have that scent. So why not leave it there, you know? But um, I don't know. If you guys do the same, let me know in the comment section down below or if you do have a remedy to take out the smell, let us know that as well. Like I said, it's either changing your gum and going for the one that has the aluminum backing or airing out the piece, uh, but that doesn't always end up working out as a permanent solution. Um, you can also try bag candies. I've talked about those before. You can get them from um, 
what's it called? Loving my bags. You can end up putting the little candies in there and then that ends up sucking out that smell. I know I've heard some people end up febrezing their items, um, but um, I'll take the smelly, <laughs> I'll take the smelly small of the goods any day. So fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to help. Next question from Mary Beth L. I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name because I know I will butcher it, so my apologies. I fell in love with your GST, and because of you, I'm buying the black caviar with silver hardware. I can't wait to get it. I'm so excited. I've never seen you carry yours. Is there a reason why? Uh, well, first and foremost, major congratulations on your soon-to-be GST and the black caviar with the silver hardware. Beautiful, beautiful combination. And I did bring mine out so we have a little bit more eye candy, and I promise you I do still use it. I don't use it as often as I did when I first got it, but when I do, I still smile from ear to ear. This is actually a forever piece. Um, I love this bag. I love the CC. It's so, I mean, some people think it's gaudy, um, but I like it, you know, because it's a little bit oversized. It's a tote. It's very, very comfortable. It fits all of my items, and I think that it's held up very nicely. It is starting to sag a little bit more um, on the sides, especially this guy right here, but overall, I mean, this bag is, what, five years old? Going on five years old? maybe something like that. I think it looks pretty good, right? Pretty good indeed, but I promise you, I do still use it, just not as often as I did um, way back when, but I think it is a beautiful, beautiful bag, and I'm so excited for you, and I hope that you enjoy it. So fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Rosina M. How are your Louis Vuitton sneakers wearing? I own the same pair as you and I can't break them in. They are a pain. Instead, I bought the front row and they are so comfy. But again, quality is bad and I had them just 15 days and the leather's starting to rub off so bad. I hope they can exchange them because I love them. Let me know how your runaways are wearing. Um, all right, so we have a little bit more eye candy. Here are the Louis Vuitton runaway sneakers and um, they've actually been holding up very, very nicely. I've had these a little over a year. I haven't had any issues uh, with the canvas or anything like that peeling off. Um, but I will have to say these guys are very heavy. They are very, very heavy. Um, I'd have to say they easily weigh maybe three and a half to four pounds. I mean, in comparison to my Vans, that weigh maybe a pound. So you definitely end up feeling the weight on them. Uh, but I also wanted to point out that with the runaways, you can end up taking off this um, this little insert here and you can put in a different insert if you need like arch support or anything like that. So I think that's really great. Uh, but they've held up very, um, very nicely. And um, they do run a little bit. Um, they run a little bit big because anytime it comes to luxury shoes, I almost always wear a size 40 regardless of the fashion house. And with these, I wear a 38 and a half. Uh, so I was kind of in between a 38 and also a 39 and the 39 was just a little too big on the toe box and I also felt that my heel ended up um, ended up kind of like coming out every single time I'd go to walk regardless of how tight I ended up tying the shoelaces and thank goodness for my very good friend Marissa she helped me out with the runaways because she also had a pair uh, so I remember asking her advice about sizing and when it comes to breaking them in um, I didn't have any issues for me they were very comfortable from the get-go just uh, they were very heavy so that was something that I had to get used to uh, so I would recommend maybe um, a different pair of socks or if that doesn't end up working out try taking out this uh, this insole here maybe put something that's maybe not as thick or not as high and that way you'll have a little bit more space throughout the shoe and that way they might end up being a little bit more comfortable uh, but that is a major major bummer when it comes to your front rows and hopefully Louis Vuitton is able to uh, to exchange them because I love those shoes I think that they are so beautiful and you're right they are crazy crazy comfortable um, I really wish that I could have added those to my collection, but I was in between sizes. They were either too big or too small, but I think that they are absolutely gorgeous. So fingers crossed everything ends up working out and fantastic question and hopefully I was able to help. Next question from Dessaline, hopefully I said that correctly. What would you recommend as an equivalent of the Louis Vuitton Eva small crossbody bag in the Chanel world, a mini flap or a small classic flap? Um, all right, so an equivalent of the Louis Vuitton Eva Clutch. All right, so the Eva Clutch is very versatile. It's small, but it packs a punch. Um, it's also very, very secure. Okay, so between the two, between the mini and the small classic flap, I think both of them are great. Uh, both of them have versatility, and it's all a matter of personal preference, uh, in my opinion, because the mini, um, like I said, it is small. It packs a punch. It doesn't have the double flap, so you're able to 
really maximize your space, you're able to use the strap or the strap that it comes with. Um, you can end up taking it off. Some people end up hiding the chains inside to use it as a clutch. You can use it on your shoulder and you can use a crossbody. So it does have quite a bit of versatility when it comes to the strap. And the small, um, I think that it ends up fitting right around the same amount as the mini does, if I'm not mistaken. And if, it, if any of you guys have a small, let me know in the comment section down below because it does have the double flap. So the double flap might take away from how much more you can fit inside. So that's why I think that's very similar to this. Um, but you also have uh, the chain that you can either use doubled up as a shoulder bag or you can um, end up using it on one um, on one long uh, strap. It's all a matter of personal preference and which one you see yourself carrying the most. I think both of them are absolutely beautiful. Both of them, in my opinion, end up fitting right around the same amount of items. Uh, and they have different um, they have different types of versatility, like I said before, when it comes to the straps. I also have the Eva clutch, and uh, I think that this one ends up fitting right around the same amount of items. Like I said before, I like the versatility that the strap has, and also that it doesn't have that double flap, but I also haven't had the small, and I haven't really experienced it. So I I think it would be unfair for me to say that one is better than the other when I haven't really, um, you know, I haven't been able to uh, to have that bag. Uh, so I would have to say that when I look at everything, I would have to say that maybe this one might be a little bit more similar. But again, if any of you guys do have the small, let us know in the comment section down below, or if you have both of them, in which one you end up uh, recommending out of the two when it comes to versatility or just a small bag that ends up packing a punch. Uh, so hopefully um, I was able to give you some pointers or some things to consider when it comes to adding either of these bags to your collection, but I'm really, really excited for you and fantastic question. Next question from Luxie C. I used to own a mini rectangular flat briefly, but I couldn't deal with the constant squeaky chain. Do any of your minis have a major squeak? Do you think it depends on the type of hardware? Um, all right, so I have heard people talk about uh, the sound that the chain makes. Um, I'm actually one of those that loves the sound, uh, but I completely understand where people are coming from, um, you know, because it can be somewhat intense. And uh, I personally don't think that it has to do with the type of hardware that affects um, the, the squeakiness or it ends up making the squeakiness be a little bit more, um, more noticeable. I think it more so has to do with um, using the item and the more and more that you use it, uh, I think that that squeak ends up going away. Uh, and the reason I say that is because uh, from the minis that I have, these two guys, I experienced, I experienced it a little bit more. Uh, I have one in the caviar leather and I also have one in the lambskin leather. And between the two, I felt that the lambskin leather was a little bit more intense in the beginning. Uh, and um, like I said before, I think that when it came to using this guy, since I've had it a little over a year, uh, between the grooves that you get on the leather, it's not as, um, not that the lambskin is stiff, but once those grooves end up setting on the leather, it doesn't really make that sound as much anymore. So let me just show you guys. It doesn't really sound too, too loud. All you're hearing is really the chain hitting each other or hitting uh, the other chain. Uh, but like I said in the beginning, it was a little bit more noticeable on the lambskin than on the caviar leather. So I also wanted to bring this guy out because um, it's one of the newest members to my Chanel collection. And it's not too, too loud. Uh, but the first day I definitely felt that uh, that, that squeakiness was, uh, was there. Uh, but even though the minis, I haven't had too much of an issue with those, I have noticed that squeak the most on the jumbo. I even talked about it on um, on my review. I said that I like the, the sound. You guys know that even when it comes to this bracelet right here, I like, I like the sound that it makes, uh, but I wanted to show you guys the difference of squeak between those two that you just heard and this one. And uh, let me just bring it up, hang on. Do you hear that? <laughs> it is super, super intense when I end up doubling the strap so I can use it on my shoulder. But like I said before, I really, really like it. But once again, it's like ASMR, uh, but out of all of the bags that I have from Chanel, between the boy bag and even the jumbo, I don't really use them as often as the other ones. So that's why I was saying, I think that it comes down to uh, how often the bag is being used. And once those grooves start to set in the leather, I think that it won't be as intense or it won't be as noticeable. So fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Cello U. Hopefully I said that correctly. I just started my luxury collection and I've been seeing that the Pochette Matisse and the Mini Palm Springs are really popular right now. I'm considering trying to add one to my collection, but to me, they're kind of similar. Both monogram small bags that are pretty carefree. If you had to pick just one for a small collection, which one would you pick? Um, all right, so we have a little bit more eye candy. I brought them both out. So the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse and the Palm Springs Mini Backpack. I do love them both and um, 
When it comes to the Palm Springs mini backpack, I love how carefree it is because it does have that color treated leather. It's very versatile. It's small, but it packs a punch. Uh, when it comes to the Pochette Matisse, it's not as carefree because it does have the, um, it does have the Vaquetta. Uh, so if you go for the reverse, that one's a lot more carefree. Um, and it's also very, very beautiful. And it's also versatile and it has uh, quite a few compartments in it. So I really do like that. It ends up organizing your bag a little bit more than the Palm Springs Mini. Um, now, if I was to go for one over the other, I would personally end up going for the Pichet Matisse, even though I love this one. And the reason is because I think that this one's a lot easier to get in and out of. It's not as fussy as this one uh, because sometimes I feel that with the zipper it ends up getting caught or um, I feel that sometimes you ha have to like hold it down to open it up so it can be somewhat fussy whether it's the main compartment or even this little guy right here um, so it's not as um, it's not as user-friendly in my opinion when it comes to the Pichette Matisse I personally view this as a medium-sized bag more than a more than a mini uh, but again it does have those compartments and I really like that you're able to see everything at a glance, you know? So you can end up putting your wallet here or uh, however you wanna set it up. I like that you have different compartments. You have three different ones. You also have a back pocket back here. And uh, like I said, it's very, very versatile. So I think that between the two, as beautiful as they both are, I think that this one just ends up offering a little bit more, a lot more user-friendly than, um, than the backpack is. Uh, but it's all a matter of personal preference and whichever one you go for, I know it'll make an awesome addition to your collection. So fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from Kenya, hopefully I said that correctly, what bag made you get into Louis Vuitton? For me, it was the Neverfull GM in Damien Azor. In college, I saw a girl walk into class with one and I was shook. <laughs> uh, all right, so the bag that made me get into Louis Vuitton. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I have always been a handbag addict. Um, ever since I was little, I always had handbags, always, always handbags. And I felt that my entire life, I was always scoping them out, you know what I mean? So when it came to Louis Vuitton, it was a million years ago, but I remember seeing a girl and she had one of the most beautiful bags I had ever laid eyes on. I had no clue about the brand. I had no clue how to go about getting it or anything like that. All I knew was that I loved the style and it just, I felt like it just, it spoke to me type of thing. But one thing stood out about this bag that I was able to research it when I got home, and that's the fact that it had the letters L and V all throughout the bag. So when I got home, I went on to AskJeeves.com. I think it was called Ask Jeeves. Was that what it was called? The search engine? I don't remember. Um, but I'm pretty sure it was called AskJeeves.com, and I remember typing in LV bag, right? I hit search, and lo and behold, I was introduced to Louis Vuitton. I fell hard, hard for the brand that very day. I remember scrolling down and seeing all these beautiful bags. I was just in awe. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, these bags are beautiful, these bags are beautiful. And the bag that that girl was holding, it was a Speedy. And I, and I finally figured that out the more and more that I started scrolling through the pictures. So I remember, um, you know, for the next couple of days, I was doing a little bit more research on them. I wanted to find out about them. And then I found out how much they were. And I was like, nope, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. But um, that day I will never forget because I absolutely fell head over heels in love with the brand. And I've said it before, I might not buy from them all the time, but I will always, always have a soft spot for Louis Vuitton in my heart. And uh, I remember that day, you know, the more and more I started to look at it, I was just like, I would love to own one of these someday you know I would love to own one of these bags someday and I remember telling my mom about them I'm like oh my gosh this bag was beautiful this bag is this this bag is that and um, you know who knew that uh, years later I would be able to make that a reality so yes that was the day that was the day that I fell in love with Louis Vuitton and it was the speedy that um, that attracted me to uh, to the brand but I would love to know your guys' thoughts on this question. What was the bag that got you into Louis Vuitton? Or what was the bag that you saw and you're just like, oh, this is a bag that I want to add to my collection someday. Was it a Holy Grail bag? Uh, or whatever the case may be, if you want to let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Uh, all right, you guys, so that does it for Mix Monday Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. Uh, for this week's lineup, um, I am planning to do a video either Friday or Saturday. I'm, gonna, I'm going to shoot 
for either of those two days, but regardless, you will see me one more day this week. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week, and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.